Hi guys, thank you very much for joining. Welcome back. So in the last episode, we got to this point. Just to recap, this is an, an expert called Simon talking here. And he said, when a call comes from a different network, they don't send information about where it comes from to the orange network. He looked at the phone schedule and I wonder if you would turn to tab two for a moment. Now, this is just a clear indication and a reminder that this is a man talking to the jury right at the end of the court case so we're in january a week before the sentencing and verdicts come in if you haven't seen any of the previous episodes of this series please do go and have a look they are interesting the first one goes through what the pathologist and all the experts said about the crime scene they are literally circling the range rover in the lane and then it moved on to Darren Nichols evidence and what he said and then it moved on to the mobile phones and the mobile phone masts and this is what I'm talking about today in these next episodes so continuing on from last time he says here he, he is looking at a schedule of sales sites on the Nichols orange telephone 22288 for the 6th of December we need not stay long on this particular document if we could pick it up from tab one, one, or t one and two are consecutive pages, but one has the heading. A is the cell site data that the call is coming from, and B is the cell site data that is being received by. The start time of the call is over on the right-hand side, and you know that the last six numbers are the time. So, for instance, on the top line, it's... 09 hours 21 44 seconds and so forth just so you're absolutely clear of what he's talking about there this is what he's talking about we have seen this in the video called phone masts if you haven't seen those videos it's a series of three videos called phone masts and there's a third one called police surveillance and phone tapping where we'll go through this and it's what's interesting about this document is that in that document we found out that Darren Nichols actually made or received a call at 6.44 which is exactly the same time as what Sarah phoned Pat. It strikes me as phone tapping or some sort of sinister act going on there involving a, a cloned phone or something that they're listening in. Might be just overthinking that a little bit but it's never mentioned. It hasn't been well mentioned once, as far as I know, in any of the documents anywhere that Darren Nichols received a call or made a, a call on the 6, uh, 6.44, exactly the same time as Sarah. It's mentioned that he made a call at 6.48, four minutes later, but not this 6.44. And... So go and have a look. Um, I will be touching upon that in this video anyway. But just so you know what that bloke's on about in that document there. A, cell data. B, cell data there. The number making the call and number, make, uh, number receiving the call there is B. Time of call is there. And if you are unfamiliar with this, this is 1995. And that's the, the 5th of the 12th, 1995, 09-21-44. Look, that's the, the exact same call log that he's talking about there. Not forgetting that this man is talking to the jury and they've obviously got a booklet or something. And he's asking them to turn to the second page, which is 150. He said that the, the numbers 65535, such as you have at the top, indicate that the, the call stayed within the orange network. It was handled within the orange network. As an example, at serial 15, he said the call come in from 288, as you know, is Nichols number got to, that is Nichols mobile number, got to 430, which is Nichols landline to Braintree. So that was an example of the call at 436 and 3 seconds that is 288 calling 430 and just so we're clear what he's talking about there this is actually on page 2 I don't know why 
he's picked that particular call log out because there is another one before this but it's that one there um, and he's saying look um, Darren Nichols has uh, called so that 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 by the way just in case you're un unaware is Darren Nichols phone number 288 is his phone number that's what the, the last three digits is uh, what they're going by here and this is a landline obviously because it starts with a one oh one three seven six um and the, the last three digits is four three zero so this is a landline um you'll notice all the way through this document it, it, there's numbers that start with four four so it's proof that it's a mobile um, and this would have been back in those days 0973 and just so that we're clear these are the numbers he's talking about this 65535 look is um, so, okay, so this is the cell data B 65535 is uh, that that's Darren Nichols phone which is on orange by the way and it's saying that that 65535 number is orange yeah so that's the orange tag if you like the the code to an orange phone and moving on we do go through this in a second i believe but that if you remember is the answer machine number look 07310123 that's Darren Nichols answer machine number and he phones that quite a lot through this document so look is Darren Nichols calling his message numbers and obviously it's all staying in the orange network there look 65535 is the actual mobile and because he's phoning his answer machine in the same phone look it's all stayed in the same area set in the same code so we move on serial 20 the 648 call is 288 again calling messages at 648 where you see 2081 in the third column that is the south site which received the call that is retendon a single 360 degree site he said changes do take place at that site some changes had been made and there was additional equipment and amplifier added he said it helps the site to listen better to mobile phones in the area today it looks somewhat different because the system has improved he said if a call is made either in a poor area or in a defective or is defective if the phone line conditions are bad it will terminate the call and restart it once a line has been established the fact is recorded in these records so long as it is more than a very tiny part of a second a hundredth of a second he said the subscriber does not get charged if there is the, that connection between sorry it does not get charged if there is that connection because on the orange system less than three seconds you do not get charged for the fact that there's a connection does not mean any meaningful speech has taken place the connection would show up if the connection was therefore more than a hundredth of a second but that would not be time for speech okay so like i say the, the, this is always mentioned is this uh, 648 call here is mentioned and he goes on here and says he remarks on that number 2081 okay so this is th that expert saying that Darren Nichols is most definitely in Rettendon at this point in 64808 okay um, he's in Rettendon that's word from the expert he says that code is the Rettendon one and Darren Nichols has used his phone look he's used it to call his ants machine and just while we're here, um, look, that is the call I was talking about. He receives a call. It's logged twice as well, look. Okay, so somebody has called his phone and that's the time, look. 6.44.43. It's logged there once 
and it's logged again immediately well um, I said immediately it's exactly the same time both of these logs are the same time it just seems a bit dodgy this time it would seem somebody's on the other end look 1578 is there on the other end this one is not um, but then again the, the second time this call is mentioned he is there look the, this call never has never been mentioned apart from myself you know I find it really strange really dodgy and I still haven't got to the bottom as to why it hasn't been mentioned yet I actually had the thought that that might be Sarah phoning Darren Nichols to be chasing Pat up she does phone him at 6.44, exactly the same time as Darren Nichols is receiving this phone call. So, you know, some half of me was say, thinking that she phoned Pat, f you know, had a little chat with him, whatever, or couldn't get through. It's only her word that she spoke to him, remember? No, nothing else. Actually, Darren Nichols uh, says that he overheard Mick complaining that Sarah had phoned whilst he was in the back of the Range Rover. But look, he receives a call himself. It would be interesting to see whose number that is. You know, because if it's anything to do with Sarah, that means she phoned him directly after or directly before she phoned Pat. Obviously, no proof. Anyway, this 648 is what they're talking about in the document. And overall, basically, it's saying that if you phone one of these phones and uh, it picks up, okay, you're not, it doesn't matter if you speak or not, you're not charged for the first three seconds of any call. We looked at lines 21 and 22. They are 646 calls. That's Wombs to 288. That is Nichols. And they're the two calls. And if you look at the right hand last six numbers, one eight five nine two four and one eight five nine three four those two calls which are those documents are eleven seconds apart one eight five nine two four and one eight five nine three four that's the time by the way that's six fifty nine twenty four and six fifty nine thirty four so Jack phoned Nichols twice in the same minute which is ultra important because these are the these are the phone calls that have got him locked up. He said in cross-examination, he said in cross-examination that both those pa both those two pages, 149A and 150, are copies of the information he supplied. The first was timed up to 14.00 and the second started at 14.56. He said the orange record is not in chronicle chronological order in all cases. The, the record is created by equipment and the network produces a record which is stored on disc and audio tape. They had to take particular information out. They had to take particular information out. He put the information into his computer and it provided the final information. I've stressed this before that this is a bit complex and a bit complicated. And well, it is. It is interesting nonetheless, I mean, it, it it's quite self-explanatory and it is explained fairly well. So if you can get your head around it, you, you can actually learn something. He talked about the immense library that they have. He said 30 million calls are stored every single day. It normally will provide the information that every system makes errors. But every system makes errors, sorry. In most cases, all the records will tie up. He said that Steel's mobile was not orange, but Salnet, and he said this, which you may think is an important piece of evidence. It's a matter of for you. He agreed that trying to plot where, where people are by mobile telephone evidence is near enough impossible. They are dealing with likelihood and possibilities, and it is very complicated. Would you go please? to page 71 which you know is behind marker 4a if you would look at 10 20 56 six down from the top there's Nichols using the site the south site Sunbury to his messages for seven seconds he says looking at that Nichols is calling his messages using the Sunbury south site the 
phone can tell you that you have messages either in an envelope on the screen or with a bleep. Digital phones often have a number of advanced features because they are a later generation. Orange can identify when the call goes to a cell site. Okay, so he's talking about this phone record here, 102056. It's on the 6th of December. And look, yeah, it's Darren Nichols mobile calling his answer machine messages and he's informing us now that 1280 is Sunbury Thames. And Sunbury Thames, don't forget, is where Darren Nichols says he was working on the day of. He said there may be three cells in one side. That is to say three sectors. The 120 degree span that I told you, he said a move from 1280 to 1281, that is the number of the cell side, means the phone has moved sectors. But later, he said it does not necessarily have to mean that. If you compare the one we're looking at, 102056, where it's 120, 1280 Sunbury with, for example, for instance, 125228, there it is, 1281 Sunbury. He said those two cells sites overlap and the move means what he said. The call actually starts with the pressing of the button before you put it to your ear. The charge, he says, begins after three seconds of the connected party accepting the call. Right, now that is interesting, because so basically what he's saying here is this, this number here, 1280, here at 102056, is in Sunbury Thames, okay? Now, he's also explaining that this 1281, number and look there 12801281 the phone is still in Sunbury on Thames they're both the, the, the he and the phone are still in Sunbury Thames but they're just moving slightly round if you remember what they were talking about uh in the other one the other video the one before this it was talking about kilometers and how they have to have like th uh, multiple masts in in these different areas so that they all connect to each other. So 1280 is Sunbury Thames. 1281 is another mast in the same area. And interestingly, look, that number 1280, 1281, 1281, 1280... 1281, look, all the way down to here, is still in Sunbury Thames. Now, that's interesting for a very good reason, because he's still there, Sunbury Thames, at 2 o'clock, look. 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, Darren Nichols has confessed and admitted that he was in Sunbury Thames, but he says it, until lunchtime. Lunchtime, then he got a, a call from Mick, and he left and went to the pub back in Braintree. This is saying otherwise. This is saying that he's still in Sunbury Thames at 2 o'clock. And he, I mean, to get back to Braintree from this, I think we've already measured it. There was an, an hour and a half, up to two hours, an hour and three quarters to get back to Braintree, back to the pub. The timing's a little bit out for what he's saying here. Which is actually good for all the people who believe Mick and Jack are innocent because he's lying. Darren Nichols is lying. And just so we're clear, this the document saying 1252.28. See, it's still in Sunbury, look. And he's talking about this one here. Uh, 1252.28. He receives uh, that call. But he's literally just explaining what 1281 means. Mr. Ethington then took Mr. Collins through various calls from Nichols Mobile that you can see on 4A and in the site on the right, which is receiving. You can see the move from the two Sunbury sites. If you turn over to 72, it's still Sunbury on the third one down, 5 to 2. 
And there you get Sarah at Rickmansworth after Heron's Gate, Hartsfordshire, then Enfield. I'm looking down the column which says whose messages they are. Then you get Harlow and Epping, three from the bottom. And when you get on to the next page, you'll get the last two on page 73 that are Nichols Mobile, which are the uh, 6.59 Two calls at 21 seconds and 32 seconds, which are picked up by the Basildon site at Christopher Martin Road. Okay, so I've done the honour of looking on Google Maps to see where Christopher Martin Road is. That's basically saying there's a south site here that the call uh, has pinged off from the call from Darren Nichols. Uh, so here's Rettendon, Rettendon Common, there's our murder scene, and uh, this is where the south site is. You'll have to make your own minds up of what it means. Th there's uh, 7.3 miles there uh, on road. I w would say that's a little bit less uh, if you're going straight across. This has confused me a little bit because it mentions the name Sarah. Sarah at Rixmansworth. I have no idea why it's mentioned the name Sarah there. I honestly don't think it's Sarah Saunders. I believe it's a place or something after Heron's Gate, uh, Hartsfordshire, then Enfield. So it seems like they're listing a group of places there. It would actually seem that they're they're looking at a document that we haven't got, uh, or personally I haven't got access to, so it's, it's a bit confusing. Although Christopher Martin Road is still in Basildon, uh, here's the map. I mean, you'll have to make your own mind up. So it's it's seven point three miles away, um, and it's saying that Darren Nichols' phone has taken that call, the Jack. Wom's phone call, right, and it's pinged off that cell site in Christopher Martin Road, which is 7.3 miles away, which is very interesting because we're now going to go on to where Jack's has come from and where Jack's pinged from, Jack's phone. Interesting that Darren Nichols' phone pings off a completely different cell site, a completely different place compared to uh, Rettendon. I mean, this is way out, isn't it? That, that's, it's, it's down and to the, uh, to the left. So what's that? North, east, south. That's west. So southwest of Rettendon is where the phone call from Darren Nichols picks up and gets pinged off. And interestingly enough, I already know that uh, Jack's pings off one over here like north northwest and actually another one actually uh southeast of rettendon we'll get to that but i just wanted to give you that scale he said one of the calls looking at 73 again on the widest column you see there one of the 1859 659 calls was initiated from ingerston and another one from Hockley, which he said uh, a little paroc parochially, you may think, were not ours, meaning not orange. He said the one second call was very indi indicative of a poor coverage area. Then he took you to exhibit 183 at 4B2. You see the map which I'm holding up. You remember it yourself, I'm sure. He said that illustrates the orange call sites and you can see on it equally the marks for the public house, workhouse lane and meadow road in the yellow dots that are there along the A130. Okay, and just so we're clear of where those two places are, these are the places that Jack's phone have pinged off. Okay, so they're, they're in Rettendon, no doubt, whether Jack was at the... The, the wheat sheaf or anywhere closer to the lane we just don't know that's what we're looking at but you know obviously personal beliefs believes that he's north of this Rettendon uh, this Rettendon name here on the map or around that that place so, so, so hang on a minute yeah so there's our murder scene up here Rettendon common Rettendon is where the wheat sheaf is and look so 
he's they're making phone calls no doubt about that here's ingots done and here over here is hockley so look here's rettendern like i say um south east of rettendern there's hockley and over here is ingots done he was asked about a server map he said it was something which would tell which south site in particular would serve the customer base on uh, computer predictions. Best server maps are checked very frequently. He looked at 4B3 on the next page and he said Workhouse Lane, which you can see there, and Meadow Road are not now, and were not then, in the best server area of Basildon, which you see here, marked by the plum colored border, which meant to him that the first south site would not be Basildon, uh, that, that the core went to. It would not be the first south site the call tried to go to. He didn't think he would agree that Rettendon or Rittal would be better because development in the direction of aerials means you could pick off any one of five or seven south sites. I understand that these are quite important details that we're talking about here, but I simply do not understand what they're talking about. Rettendon, Rittle, they're in Rettendon, so the, but they're saying that the phones wouldn't have bounced off the phone mass in Rettendon because of development. Um, and they're talking about, it seems that they've got diagrams and pictures, uh, other literature that we haven't got access to, talking about plum coloured borders. So they're looking at drawings whilst they're in court here, uh, which we haven't got. Well, I haven't. But according to this, it's saying that Basildon and Rettendon have got their own phone mast, but because of the terrain and development stages of the aerials, you know, back in 1995, they were quite new. It would seem that, you know, Rettendon wasn't the one, it wasn't the best cell site to, to take those calls. Mad. The best cell usage is the highest probability, but you do but but you do have a range of other possibilities it is based on there being no obstructions in view he said this which again is significant you may think it's not easy to replicate something that occurred in the past if you have a good core setup and the the connection of is good quality compared with others it can be contained on the basildon saint south site and will not necessarily be transferred to wickford if not it would try to find the best again i just I, I can't understand what they're talking about in the area and it might go to rettendon or other sites in the area he agreed that if you were at rettendon at 648 there was nothing to preclude you being in the best server area for basildon at 11:59, 11 minutes later i think he means 659 there 11, min 11 minutes later after 6.48 is 6.59. He said most of the time it is strength and quality of the signal that go hand in hand. He said in a motor car such as a B registered Passat everything is variable. The variable factors include a particular position in the car and driving itself increases number uh, a number of multiple reflections. Movements may mean you encounter obstructions. Going back to 73, 74, you don't, know, you don't need to. He said the call to Tate at 6.44 came through south site 1404, which was the Wickford south site. Interesting. Right, okay, so, uh, so there's Rettendon, and that's where Pat Tate, Tony Tucker, and Craig Rolfe are all going. And here's Wickford. Now, this gentleman says in the document that the, 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 that call from Sarah is picked up from the south site here in Wickford. So there's your scale of things there. He also, if you remember in the previous video to this, he says all sorts of different obstructions. He's talking about obstructions there, uh, but he also talks about the head movement and the angle of the phone and where the angle the uh, the position that the phone's actually facing now if you think about it that is very interesting because here look 
is the Rettendon Turnpike. They've come along here, or here, to this turnpike, turned left down here into the main road, right, and then pulled into the lane here. Now, if we're going to go by what that bloke was saying about the position of the phone, okay, so uh, we're talking obstructions being the Range Rover and his head, okay, the, even the headrest, the things like that, you've got to take into consideration about him being in the car. Okay, it's being picked up by this one, which is down here to uh, to the w west, again, of of uh, Rettendon. Which says, doesn't it, if you think about that, Pat has got, may have, I'm not going to say for sure, Pat may have his phone up to his left ear. As Wickford is on the left of Rettendon, it would suggest, wouldn't it, that the phone is facing towards Wickford from Rettendon. So, doesn't that say that Pat's got that phone up against his left ear? Just a bit of pitch building, um, thought-provoking details there. May have. In re-examination, he again dealt with strength and quality as the two factors. He said, if another car is beside you, that may prevent the signal getting to you, but the size of the other vehicle would uh, have a bearing. That's pretty obvious, isn't it? That's the same goes if you're walking down the street and you're in between two houses, one on the uh, either side of the road. Your signal kind of goes, doesn't it? It goes a little bit blank, a little bit weak, and purely because you're in a, a, a built-up area. The same goes with cars, obviously, that's what they're saying. He said, finally, all phones are tested to a standard specification, but they don't have exactly the same standard of operation. Mr. Peter Taylor was the first witness from Salnet. He produced Exhibit 181, which is the acetate which depicts the area covered by the Raiden Sal site and is one up on the board that you've seen already. He said, it's a computer-generated prediction which matches up with the terrain. Of the calls relayed by a particular cell transmitter, there's a 90% probability that the call was made within the pink shaded area on every coverage plot. In any case, if it was outside that area, it would be nearby. He produced those coverage spot plots from information stored within the database. So it's clear here that they're in court and they're looking at completely different documents than we're looking at. Um, and personally, I haven't got access to any of those. Would be interesting to see because he's saying, look, it's likely that these calls came from in this certain area. But if you're going to go by some of the details that we've already heard here, the, those, cir those areas that would have been circled there on the page are going to be pretty big. If, uh, if we're going by anything that the Google Map images that we've just seen are to go by. He produced the schedule, which is uh, marker 4A. We have been looking at already in the telephone schedule. We can go back to that 4A, page 72, second from the bottom. Steel's mobile is he's talking about. Time five, uh, 50, 30619. He said that call was relayed through the Raiden cell site. The previous steel call is that at 2 11 43 about 10 down he looked there and saw that uh, that came not through the radar south site but the manning tree south site okay if you're not already confused well you will be now got to throw this into the works this is now mick steel's uh mick steel's phone record of calls he made from the fourth and uh that goes on to the sixth I have actually made a video on these phone records. I cannot for the life of me remember the name of it. I think it's called Mackin, Mickin Mountain Tree. Uh, it, it cuts off. I remember it cutting off quite rapidly. It was an interesting little video, but it just got cut off because I didn't know which way to go with it. It wasn't actually planning out the way I assumed it would, but you know, it, there was a good deep load of detail in there. It covers all of this that, that Mix here. So this is saying that Mix in Manning Tree, it maps out where Manning Tree is, Ipswich Town, Colchester, 
and that's basically what this document is saying just to make sure you know what we're talking about there is that one uh, 2 1143 and he's basically saying it, it's Manning tree look uh, that's basically what he's talking about that call there um, this is mix number 978 and yeah it's self-explanatory um, Manning tree look he dealt with calls from a payphone at the Sorrel Horse Inn at Barham in Ipswich in the minutes 2.29, 2.32 and 2.32 again. He identified various south sites. They are the four which are Upminster, to the right of the motorway, Brentwood, Basildon and Childerditch. And he produced maps of those sites. 189 is the Assateague. Uh, you cannot see it because it's underneath what is on the board there, but you can probably remember it in, its, in the evidence. The four different acetates which gradually built together to form a mass of that area, each of them having a different shape and not quite overlapping. The acetate itself for the whole area was 189 and there were maps for each of the separate areas. Upminster was 181A. Brentford was 181B, Basildon was 181C, and Childerditch was 181D. Right, I like this because we can now go to the phone records and see where these people were, look. Okay, so these are the calls he's talking about. There's a payphone in Sorrel from the Horse Inn. Sorrel Horse Inn in Ipswich. Okay, there's four phone calls. Um, and he says... Okay, there's, there's four phone calls and there's four sale sites, but one of these calls here says it's to a payphone, which I can't really get my head around. I don't know how that's bounced off a sale site, a mobile phone sale site. But he says that, uh, so we've got two to Tucker here, two calls to Tucker, and one to a payphone. And one to Darren Nichols. I would suggest the one south site bouncing off the one in Brentwood is the one to Darren Nichols. However, the um, Childer Ditch is in Brentwood. So, you know, go figure. Okay, and just so we're clear about where all of this is. Okay, someone's here in Ipswich, right, using that mobile, uh, using that, uh, that, that telephone. And, uh... He is look, they're phoning somebody all the way down here. And all of these three places are in the same area. Sorry, I missed one out there. Upminster. It's they're all in the same area anyway, it doesn't matter. Look, um Basildon, Brentwood, Childer Ditch and Upminster. Uh, you know, I've got no other words what to, I don't know what to say about this there's somebody's calling these people who live around here or who or who are around in in this area you know there's the, uh, the there's a, a payphone in one of these areas it's not deciphered which areas are which nobody knows which one is Tucker's no one knows which is um, Nichols no one knows which one the payphone is, but to have a guess, I would say Brentwood is Nichols, Basildon um, is somebody in the payphone. I, I I don't know if Tucker used payphones. I would say it is because well, there's Fobbin Look, and that's where Tucker lives. So I would just assume Basildon. You know, I, I'm assuming that's where Tucker was. I I don't know. I have no ideas. Uh, but Upminster, um, interestingly though, look, uh, Bullfan is there, and Childerditch is there, um, Brentwood's up there. They're all in the same area. Um, you know, it's just interesting, that's all. It's interesting because these are the phone calls that it, it's been assumed that these phone calls from its switch. Is, uh, is is that somebody planning that evening? Uh, is, is somebody planning that the, the meeting later on at 6 o'clock? So whoever's making that call is planning to meet 
uh, our guys, you know what I mean? Um, doesn't Jack live in Ipswich? Jack lives in Ipswich, don't he? Uh, uh, Colchester, I think. Uh, just off the top of my head, I can't remember. You have copies of the maps in your own exhibits. He produced uh, also Tab 5, if you'd like to turn to it. This is the Steel Mobile... Uh, the phone that's being used, as you see from the fifth column, the one ending in 978. At ser serial 14 and 15 on the left-hand side, you can see that two calls just after 6 o'clock, 603 and 609, were both being passed through the Childerditch cell site and were calls to Wombs Mobile from Steele's Mobile. Right, so this is 6 o'clock in the evening and Mick's phoning Jack and it's being passed through this Childer Ditch site. Now, I don't know if you can remember, but apparently the... Well, I say apparently. The uh, the halfway house is on this road, I believe. Uh, it's, it's around in this area anyway. I know that. Uh, so, that's quite suspect. It is suspect because well Mick says he's here in this place called Bullfan. Actually, I've I've been uh, corrected and somebody's told me that you pronounce Bullfan, Bullvan. So uh, let's do that from now on. Bullvan, mixing Bullvan. Uh, it is suspicious because I've already read what's coming up and it says that there are that that, that call anybody calling from Bullvan, it would not go through or it's unlikely that it went through that Childer ditch. Uh, that cell site so he said the coverage maps were produced by computer which was working correctly at all stages he produced the acetates exhibit 189 he he was cross-examined by mr. Etherington uh, he said the exhibit 190 showed you an area well served by cell sites overlapping applied to the Raiden site a portion of the Raiden coverage was the barroom area you can see that on the one that you can see that on the one that is up before you at two o'clock position on the plan you know this backwards already i'm sorry to have to tell you but i have to deal with it in the summing up he said this is probably because of the high terrain the area in between the two purple large areas and uh, small is likely to be served by different cell sites that is what is left white on the plan there are two there are one or two other serving cell sites surrounding those peak areas like barham it's very common when there are isolated areas of coverage away from the main area cell net maps are called likely server maps the best server area for barham is the area covered by raiden other parts are covered by other cell sites. Raiden is most likely server in the pink area to Barham. In the areas of green, other cell sites are likely. Okay, you work that out because I am not going to even think about it. And there's more. He said the Raiden site has three transmitting sectors. On 4A, he drew the comparison between the calls at 157, 2 o'clock and 211 using Manning Tree and moving on to Raiden to the next calls at 303 and 308. He said Manning Tree and Raiden adjoin and he used the word tessellate. Uh, he said they were tessellate meaning like a jigsaw. They don't overlap. 90% of calls were originated within the pink area. 10% would not be in the actual pink area, but would be close by. He said, to use Manning Tree, the probability is that the caller was in the northeast of Colchester. He was only thinking about probability. He said, as to Childer Ditch, there are a number of south sites in that area. It is another well-covered area close to the M25. He said that if the caller was near Bulvern at 6.03 and 6.09, you know those two calls. Bulvern is not an area covered by uh, Childer Ditch. Bulvern. Bulvern would normally go through South Site 70, which is Basildon. You would have to go at least two to two and a half kilometers before coming into the coverage of Childer Ditch. Basildon jigsaws with Childer Ditch. There's some small degree of overlap, 
records cannot show the precise direction of the phone. In calls from the halfway house, there's a 90% prediction that they would be routed through Upminster, but Mr. Taylor couldn't say all calls would be so routed. Okay, so like I say, that uh, there's Bulvan and there's Childerditch. This bloke saying that if uh, Mick was in Bulvan, the calls wouldn't bounce from this south side in Childer Ditch, okay, um, which is basically calling Mick a liar. So, but he is saying that it would come. It was possible that it could come from this one in Upminster. Uh, or, or the one in Basildon. Um, so, you know, it would. Uh, it, this is kind of proving that Mick was closer to the Childer Ditch South site than he actually says. You know, he says he was in this place, Bulvan. Um, it just. Proves really that he was actually in fact a little bit closer when he was calling Jack at six o'clock I mean it is six it's six oh three and then another one at six oh nine so you know they It would be nice to know where Jack's phone was at this point where Jack Where his phone is actually being pinged from whether they're all together Okay, this video is getting on a little bit, and uh, I don't want to bore anybody. These are quite boring when they're not that really, in not really interesting. I understand. Uh, I have no ideas how you can listen to these for for so long. Uh, this is the last one I'm going to read. There are another ten to this one, uh, but because I've actually pulled up the phone records and things like that. There's, it's just taken up a little bit more time than I expected. So I'll finish with this one and then uh, we'll continue with the other 10 in the next one. And I'll just have to rearrange the next videos after that. Um, I have actually had a little flick through this. There's not as much as I th actually thought about these phones. It starts changing subject fairly soon on after these i think there's another two or three videos of the phones and then it starts changing subject again so uh let's just get all this down and you know it's there for reference then isn't it this is the last one i'm going to read as i say in re-examination he said he was saying bulvern was in the 90 percent basildon area it's not impossible for a call from bulvern to be picked up by a south site other than ba basildon Wesley Heights is directly to the east of Bulvern. If a call f comes from Bulvern, we predict it uh, would be routed through Basildon, but but cannot say always. Okay, and just for the record, there's Wesley Heights, there's Bulvern, um, Wesley Heights. There's a, a south site here, and yeah, there's, there's a, there, I mean that goes without saying. Basically, it's the same kind of direction isn't it that uh that these phone calls from bulvern could have been met with um but unfortunately for mick this phone evidence is saying that it is actually pinged off this one in childer ditch um bulvern isn't covered by this here in childer ditch so, somebody's telling Porky's there. They're saying they're there when actually the phone puts them somewhere else. Um, but Mick says he was in Tesco's. Mick says that he was uh, he was in Tesco's with his missus. His missus actually backed it up. She, she, she he says he was in Tesco's, which is um, in another place, you know. It's not in Bulvern. Um, he was in Bulvern for something else. I can't remember what. But there isn't a Tesco's in Bulvern. He went Tesco. He went shopping with his missus after. Um, if memory memory serves me correctly, there's a garage round here somewhere. I might be thinking of something else, but I think there's a garage. That's where Mick says he was. 
I know there was a call for a receipt. Mick had a receipt. Mick racked his brain so much in uh, in the police station when he was arrested in the interview. He racked his brain so much and got his missus to get a receipt. There He kept a receipt from somewhere, from a garage or the one from Tesco's. And he, he put it on his board somewhere and told his missus to go and have a look and she got it she actually found it um but there was some discrepancies with it or something i'll have to dig all that out um i think it was in the newspaper that something there was a, a receipt that it was, either they could find they, they found it and there were some discrepancies on it or it or they found it and it just simply wasn't the right one for the right time something like that uh, but yeah, mixed alibis that he's in Tesco's buying champagne of all things. You know, this is what gets me. It's that that very thing that gets me because it's he's celebrating. You know what I mean? Um, it would seem he's celebrating, and so are the rest of them. The others are just about to go celebrating as well, but they were murdered. Even Sarah's in on it. Sarah's getting pissed that night. You know what I mean? She's she's up there out with Mark. Getting, getting wankered at a, a wine place. You know what I mean? So, why is it different for Mick? Mick's out. He's, he's well, Mick's actually going to Tesco's to get his. The other's going out, you know, to a nice posh restaurant. Um, but Mick's, f f so, so, Tesco's will have to suffice for Mick. And sausage rolls, of all things. Champagne and sausage rolls. Uh, but, you know, that's their choice, isn't it? That's what he says. That's where they were. Him and his missus. Now, his missus is actually, uh, we've learnt just recently, his missus, Jackie Street, suffers badly from depression. And she went to take the stand to go in mixed defence, but she couldn't. She wasn't fit to because of depression. So, it could be the reason why, you know, it could be the reason why they're shopping in tesco's for their champagne because maybe she didn't want to go out you never know reading between the lines anyway uh like i say there's another 10 pages to this but we'll have to go in another video because this is taking forever i'll see you in the next one guys please take care of yourselves